Okay, okay um, good afternoon everybody. Um, my name's Sarah Dean. I'm the Senior Advisor Emergency Management for Tablelands Regional Council. And my role is all about planning for the worst whilst hoping for the best. <laughs> um, and I guess my role is dual in the sense that I have a role to help community in the preparation, um, response and recovery to disaster events. Um, and also to help different sections of the community, like businesses, community organisations and so on. But I also have a role to assist council in their own business continuity arrangements, so helping council to be prepared for um, worst case scenarios. So we'll talk about those. And I guess the bad news is that crises are inevitable. The good news is that failure is not. <laughs> Business continuity is not just about helping businesses survive, it's about helping them thrive in the event of a, dis of a disruption. So what exactly am I talking about? Um, we all experience little annoyances, usually every day, <laughs> um, that make our working lives difficult, whether it be an email failure, or FPOS, or the phone's not working, or something else that is equally annoying. Um, and these things are annoying and they can be disruptive and they might require some form of short-term response but they're not really what I consider to be a crisis. So at one end of the scale you have disruptive type events. So short-term, there's an interruption to service, um, may require some kind of short-term response and there may be an effect on stakeholders. But the other end of the scale is really what I'm talking about. The catastrophic events, high impact, high intensity, can lead to failure of services, um, failure of businesses, profound long-term issues for the business and for community, and significant consequences for shareholders and stakeholders. The events that I'm referring to are those that can fundamentally threaten the survival of a business. So that's really where I'm talking. Um, as I said, high impact, high intensity, whether it be a fire, a flood, COVID-19 or something else, um, those type of events can have profound consequences for organisations and, and for our stakeholders. As I said, crises are inevitable, but failure isn't. And there are many steps that businesses can take in advance of a crisis that can help ensure the survival of the business in the event of any unplanned disruption to business as usual. So one of the most important is risk management. Um, and business continuity is simply one component of risk management. And I like to think of it as an umbrella or a shield protecting the business from the risks that we face. Um, sometimes though, and I guess there are risks that we can foresee as well as risks that you know, we can't foresee, but that risk management framework is really our shield that protects us. But every now and again, a risk will slip through and you know, or we'll get a hole in our umbrella. <laughs> that risk will come through and that is really where your business continuity plan comes into play. It's really a safety net and the business continuity plan um, can, is a pre-planned response to a range of foreseen and unforeseen scenarios. So that's why business continuity planning is so important. And one of the most powerful questions the business owner can ask to determine the threats to an organisation are what if questions. So what if I lose access to my business premise? What if it's a fire or a cyclone or a flood? What if the power goes down for you know a couple of hours? Probably not too inconvenient, but what about a week? <laughs> um, what if you've got no phones or uh, FPOS for longer than just a couple of hours? You know these are all impacts to the business, and really your business continuity plan. Um, you know asking those what if questions. You know what if you lose your key supplier? Having those discussions with your staff and with your stakeholders actually is scenario planning. So by asking those and generating that discussion, that is the stuff that you need to document in your business continuity plan. Um, there are so many scenarios. What if the lottery syndicate comes in? Okay, there's a big lottery syndicate in Tablelands Regional Council. Dread to think the day if it ever comes in. <laughs> How many staff might just go in one foul swoop through the door? You never know. Um, but these are real risks. Um, you know, pandemic, it doesn't really matter whether it's a lottery win or it's a pandemic, ultimately, 
the key bottom line is that you don't have the staff that you need to do the job or to deliver those critical functions. Um, so that is really what you need to do. Identify the actions to prevent, pre prepare, respond and recover and to document that in a business continuity plan. And we do have a template on our website available for businesses. If you just put business continuity plan into Google, you'll find a range of templates. There's heaps of information available to help. And um, as cliche as it sounds, I'm sure you're all familiar with the words of, I believe it was Sir Winston Churchill, who said, he who fails to plan is planning to fail. No truer words spoken <laughs> in disaster management or business continuity management. The next thing to do is to identify critical business functions. Um, so that will be different for each type of business. So as an example, for retail, uh, the critical business function might be foot traffic, you know, getting people to actually come through the door. Whereas for a restaurant or a cafe, it might be table turns, you know, how many tables you've got and then how quickly you can turn them over and get people. Okay? That's what your critical business function is. So you need to work out what that is for your business. And then you need to identify what the maximum tolerable outage is, or the MTO. So how long can we cope without the phones, or how long can we cope without this member of staff before we find ourselves in a big hole? <laughs> okay, that's what you need to think about. Um, and then once you've done all of that, you need to identify which staff are critical to those functions. Um, identify the IT and the other resources that are critical to deliver that function and know what other stuff they need to deliver that function. So I can remember once being um, in an evacuation of a council facility in the UK, and they'd done a fair bit of business continuity planning, but the legal department had failed to identify in their business continuity plan a very important piece of equipment, and that was the legal stamp. Now they didn't have it, and that then delayed them processing documents. It had an impact on the court system. <laughs> so, you know, it can be a very simple thing, um, but it's about those knock-on impacts. So have a think about those things, and that's the stuff that you need to document in your plan. And think about whether you can do things remotely or from other locations. Now, thankfully for, um, for us, business continuity only really has a few key focus areas. So if you focus on these areas, you can't really go wrong. So think about your building and your facility. Um, so it's unavailable to you, or there's no power, or you know that it's not functioning as it normally would. Staff and skill risks. We don't have the staff, or we don't have the required skill to deliver the function that we need to. Um, information and communication technology. Okay, it's a risk to us all. Phones, IT, all of that stuff. Um, supplier, partner, and customer risks. Okay, sometimes it can be a supplier that fails that has an impact on our business um, and specific equipment risks. So I just talked briefly about that. So you need to think about it from that perspective. And if you, you know, when you're thinking about staff, for example, think about whether you have up-to-date contact details for your employees. When you're thinking about IT, think about whether you have um, online meeting capability, if you, um, you know, all of these type of things that we have experienced during the pandemic, they are all applicable to other type of events also. And I guess when the ship does hit the sand, because it will, don't panic, um, implement the plans you've developed, confirm for your staff what are the critical functions that they need to focus on. Because sometimes, some types of events can, um, it might not be so relevant to businesses, but for, a, for an organisation like council, for example, we have a critical activity about monitoring dams, so dam safety. Well, we don't need to do that if it's a power outage, but we do need to do it if it's a rainfall event. So sometimes the type of event may um, skew how you view your critical functions. So you need to think about that, confirm for staff what they need to do, who will cover for staff if people go off sick, especially that's been the case with the pandemic. Um, you know, who is covering whose critical functions? And it, that all needs to be documented and needs to be reconfirmed at the time of an event. Um, confirm who has the responsibility to make decisions. Um, who has authorities for, you know, delegated signings. Think about pre-prepared messages before the event. There's a lot of work that you can do to make sure that, you know, the message will, be, will need to be tailored, but you can think about those key components when it's calm and peaceful not when you're in the middle of an event trying to respond. Um, and we have lots of pre-planned templates with various things. 
And when you do have an event, it's really key to stay in daily contact with all stakeholders. Okay? Even if you haven't really got an update, for saying that you don't have any further information is actually an update. Okay? Just keep those communication chains open. Um, that's going to help your business to survive. After the storm goes without saying, thank staff, customers, suppliers for their support. Try and get on top of um, the backlog. Okay? There was a down period, you need to get back on top of that. Use extra staff casuals, ask staff to work overtime. Ensure customers, suppliers know you're back to full work capacity. Do extra marketing to restore customer confidence. Having kept the critical functions operating, there will be functions that had to be let go or downgraded. You need to think about how you're going to reinstate those. Um, and then getting ready for the next crisis. Okay, now, all of these things, it, as I said, it doesn't matter whether it's a pandemic or a cyclone or a fire or a flood. These things, these steps that I've shared today will help you in all types of events. Hold a debrief and document what you learnt. Okay, it's really important. It's often the step that people fail to remember. Identify what worked, what didn't, what was a close run thing, why that was. Decide on what can be done differently now um, to make sure it doesn't happen again in the future. And update your business continuity thing, plan with the things that you learnt about your critical functions. So the ability to act under pressure is not an inborn ability. It is a learned skill, okay, and it does take time. So if you don't want your business to fail, then you should actually practice failing. <laughs> um, resilience is like a muscle, and the more that you train it, the stronger it gets. So that's really um, my key message for today. Um, thank you.